Nail Life. I'm Ashley and thank you for watching this video. As you can see, today's setup is a little bit different. I have some exciting new content that I'm bringing to you guys and starting a new chapter of this channel, which is guests that I will feature on certain important and special videos for you. Today, this new series of videos is going to be two parts. But first off, I'm Ashley. I'm a rave mom and real mom in my real life. And I like to live by the mantra carpe diem. So my channel is all about living in the moment, creating positivity, and just creating the best you that you can possibly be. Today, we're going to talk about meditation and the benefits and how you can start your own meditation practice in your daily life. Meditation for me was something that came with my yoga practice. But later on, I found out that actually meditation in your everyday life is very beneficial. I'm so excited to be sharing with you a chat that I had with one of my friends, Hannah. She is one of my really good friends from college. We both went to design school together. But not only is she a creative like I am, she's also a newly minted entrepreneur. She's starting her own design research and user research practice and consultancy. I am so, so proud of her. And she'll tell you a little bit more about her business venture in this video. I asked Hannah to join me for this conversation because she has a meditation journey that is remarkable. And I wanted her to share some tips so let's get started. Okay, so hi Hannah. Thank you so much for joining me. I just did a little brief intro about a little bit about who you are and how I know you, but um, did you want to share a little bit about yourself before we get into all about meditation? Sure. Um, yeah. I'm an entrepreneur right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I just pretty much quit my job a few weeks ago and wow. it's been it's been quite exciting ride um, and up until then I was feeling really um, like I wasn't really living my most authentic life and I really wanted to kind of burst out and get to do what I really wanted to do yeah. um, and so before that I kind of went through a big long journey of um, exploring changing my diet changing my lifestyle uh, kind of really just all pretty much organically ended up kind of, uh, you know, exploring different avenues down wellness and mm -hmm. came to the point where all of that kind of culminated into what am I actually doing with my, with my life and what do I want to do? So then I pretty much just kind of, uh, you know, took the leap of faith and am in the midst of it right now. And also really excited to share all the learnings I had over that journey, including meditation, including um, food, nutrition. Those are some of the things that I'm really excited about. Yeah, that's amazing. Can you tell me a little bit about the the project or the business that you're starting up and kind of venturing into? Sure. Um, my two passions in life, one is user research and innovation. So understanding uh, a product or service to inform uh, or kind of understanding the user to inform the product or service and then innovating, coming up with new ideas. I have I new ideas all the time, every single day. Uh, a lot of them actually come through when I'm meditating and that's one of my, my passions in life is to just come up with lots of ideas and to help other people come up with ideas to solve challenges in the world. So that's one big passion of mine. And then the other passion of mine is food, nutrition, lifestyle, meditation, uh, really understanding my behavior, understanding the world, how things work, energy, and all of these things kind of, for me, culminate in what is now a treatment called in the healthcare space called lifestyle medicine. I think a, a big range of healing coming up within the world of people starting to open up and wake up to uh, getting therapy or trying new methods of energy healing or going to a meditation class or even yoga. And so these things are up and coming and I'm watching this and I've been watching this while I was working at my uh, the last seven years in consultancy and corporations. So my company is called Lifestyle Medicine Design Studio and it's a human centered design innovation consultancy helping health focused organizations really understand their users and innovate uh, new products and services to really help heal the world essentially. Wow, that's amazing. And that's exactly what this channel is all about. It's about finding that positivity and 
really bring it into your life in all aspects of your life. So I'm so excited to dive into your journey and just how you came upon your healing journey and what you've done so far with that. Before we get into the meditation piece, what is um, an item on your bucket list that you're excited to kind of check off in the future? I'll give you a couple that I've already done that was exciting for me to be like, oh yeah, I did that. Yeah. Um, and one was moving abroad and living abroad. So I moved to London for three years and that in itself was, I remember thinking, you know, I want to live in another country. I went to Bali. Um, that was a place wow. I'd always wanted to go. Yeah. Went there went to a yoga retreat and really did the whole kind of kind of spiritual awakening experience, which was quite fun. Mm -hmm. I think the next thing for me, the big step for me is really building a team, which, uh, and, and starting this company and getting, growing it. And, um, also finding my, you know, my dream location of where I want to really settle. Cause right now I'm kind of, I've always been jumping around in apartments and that sort of thing. And I really would love to ground and find a place where I, can call home, maybe even start my own YouTube channel. Yeah, Who knows? that would be awesome. I mean, there's so many different possibilities. One thing I wanted to ask you is, you know, a lot of people get stuck and there's a lot of things that people want to do, whether, like you said, it's traveling abroad or starting their own business or, you know, just getting out of their comfort zone overall. Do you have mm -hmm. any advice for those people who are a little, I guess, scared or they feel stuck and they just don't know how to begin and kind of, you know, get out there and try new things. Mm -hmm. It's so funny you say that because that was where I was at not too long ago. And a couple of the books that I read, a couple of the uh, the people I follow on online, um, the one thing that really helped me and I tried it and I was like, how is this gonna work? And that is to be happy and excited and joyful. Like if that's what you want to feel because you think you have to get somewhere, mm -hmm. feel that way right now. Yeah. I was in this low kind of um, what you would, what you might call an energy space, like vibration. So I yeah. was really down. I was low. I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. And to get yourself out of that, you have to think of something happy. You have to think of something joyful, yeah. um, grateful for something. So honestly, it's just starting – really small and I can't even tell you how helpful that was for me I remember yeah. feeling so much more joy mm -hmm. that you know over a course of a couple of weeks just by just by falling in love with my cup of tea <laughs> yeah you know that is such a good segue into meditation because I think one of the core things when it comes to medic meditation is just gratitude like and I actually recently yeah. saw an article where you know bringing gratitude into your practice, whether it's yoga or meditation, can actually change the chemical um, space, like the chemical makeup of your brain. It completely changes just your attitude and it physically changes you. Just to take a step back, can you explain kind of what the purpose of meditation is and like, where, like if you know anything about where it comes from and why it's beneficial for people in general? Sure. So I'm probably, uh, I don't know kind of the, the deep history of it, but what I do know is that, you know, it has been part of the yoga, uh, the yoga history. I think they've kind of are tied more or less because yoga is all about being kind of aware of your body or in your body as you go through movements and that in itself can be meditative. So honestly, that's, that's even an option as well for someone who wants to walk. You can walk and do a meditation. You can do yoga and be in meditation just by focusing your, 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 you know, yourself on the breath or focusing on the movements themselves. And so mm -hmm. I think the, the kind of the key of the history of meditation really comes from just sent, like you said, kind of the, the center, centering yourself and coming back to you and going inward. And mm -hmm. so going inward means, you know, it just means closing your eyes and being within your, the universe of your own self and mm -hmm. kind of coming back to that on a regular basis so that you can remember who you are as a, as, as a person, as a soul versus what's going on around me kind of yeah. thing. And so that's really, I think the key around meditation, at least for me, yeah. after a whole year of doing that, where I ended up doing 30 minutes every morning for a year, I, I was in my office and my old boss from Chicago 
uh, came to London for a business meeting. After our meeting, he uh, chatted with my boss in London, so the boss that I had currently. And later on, I heard that they had talked a little bit about me, and he had actually told my new boss, my manager in London, like, what has got, what's, Hannah has changed. Like, she's so much calmer. Like, she's just calm. What's going on? Just showed the impact that meditation, that was the only thing I had changed that year was my meditation. My manager, after just two weeks, I remember her telling me, this is just two weeks of two minutes a day, mind you, like not even that much. Mm -hmm. And she, you've gotten more productive, like you're faster, you're more organized, like you're, you're more clear headed. I came in earlier. I got things done. I mean, I felt so much more productive. Yeah. So I would say kind of a, an inner calm, productive, yeah. more productive. And people will start to notice because when you start to go inward and close your eyes and sit in that silence every day. Yeah. And you become this kind of grounded, slow, kind of calm person. You aren't reacting to things as much. You're you're actually waiting, and you're starting to re- respond in a compassionate way. But for some reason, it just allows you an extra couple, you know, minutes of space to then. What do I actually need to say? Okay, and is this actually a big deal? And you know, so you start to slow down. I think it really slows your whole nervous system down. Yeah. It slows your whole body down and I went from having anxiety every single morning when I wake up woke mm-hmm. up to like my anxiety only happens in certain situations once in a while now definitely I think you're right that you're less quick to react you do take a, a, a breath and some space but I also think um it it also can help you build confidence in yourself too it can make you feel um that you're giving back to yourself, that you're worthy of that space and that time, and it allows you to understand your work. Just tell me a little bit about your journey. How did you discover meditation? And um, I guess what has that process been like and where are you now? Sure, so I think everyone will discover meditation differently. There's so many different avenues mm-hmm. for me. I had heard of it and it, I didn't think it was for me because I was so anxious and so jumpy that I'm like, there's no way I can sit for in my, in a, you know, in this, like this pose for a long period of time because my mind is always racing and a cooking class. Uh, I wanted to start eat, eating healthier. And so I took a cooking class and then the cooking teacher introduced me to a course. This is when I was living in London and this course happened to be a, uh, like a self-awareness, self Uh, kind of exploration or discovery course that I was a bit hesitant to go to because I figured I'm fine. Like, why do I need to change myself? Mm -hmm. And it ended up changing the course of my life. And that's where I'm at. That's why I'm where I am now. Um, And one of the things they did in one of those courses was a yoga slash meditation class. The meditation that we would do once in a while in that class um, were guided meditations. So they were helpful to Uh, You would lay down and you would just kind of feel into, close your eyes and feel into your heart or your body or your, you know, your belly and, and maybe see colors or see different things. So it was very visual and I'm a very visual person. So that helped me a lot. Didn't really go back to that or try it again because I didn't really know where to go. I didn't have any resources. It was pretty much just that one experience. But then what happened was a few months later, I was at I was working in this corporate environment, very, very busy all the time, that I was assigned a project with a client Mm -hmm. um, that was extremely, one of the most difficult clients I had been told um, that I would be working with. What I realized was that I need to help myself. No one else is going to help me, help me with this. No one else is going to help me. Mm -hmm. I need to help myself. I woke up one day and said, okay, you know what? I'm going to start meditating because it helped me that one particular day um, back in that course I took. And I decided I would just start with two minutes in the morning. And I just started, I I told myself, okay, five days. We'll try for five. No, I think I may have even said two days or something really small. Yeah. I for at least a couple days, see how it goes. So Mm -hmm. I I woke up one morning. I didn't look at my phone. I didn't look at anything. I did go to the bathroom, came back, sat in my bed. And then for two minutes, put my timer on and I just closed my eyes and 
tried to see if I prefer my hands on my body or my hands here, kind of on my side. I think I started with my hands on my body and yeah. just two minutes. And after 30 seconds, I kind of like peeked at the clock and then was like, oh my God, is this almost over? And, you know, kind of like that. And then I was like, okay, try to not think. And, and then two minutes was, we're done. And I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. But then I did it again the next day and the next day and the next day. And after two weeks, I was just accidentally closing my eyes in silence for 10 minutes without trying. Yeah. Then it turned to 15 and 20 and 30. And it just- yeah, I think that's a really good point and a good tip for people who are even just starting out with getting a self-care routine together or, as you said, like starting something new like meditation. And it can seem really overwhelming, especially because we're always on the go and we never feel like we can find enough time to carve out the time. Starting small is such a big thing. It's such a it's such an easy way to ease your, your mind into it. And, you know, you mentioned something too about always, you know, finding a position that really works for you and finding um, a stance or, you know, a pose that you really feel comfortable in. So, you know, you can go on YouTube, you can look at all these apps and there's, you know, specific ways that people say, you know, this is the pose that you should do. But I think if you're a beginner and you don't even know kind of what you know you know you're just starting off from scratch i think that's true that you know there's so many different ways that you can jump in so for you it's like you know putting your hands on your body other people like to you know sit cross-legged or i came through meditation through yoga so that's kind of how i was introduced so you know growing up as a dancer yoga was appealing to me for the movement and then at the end or at the beginning there's some type of yoga meditation so for me when i started to do it on my own specifically i liked meditating you know while i was laying down it was a way for me to kind of shut off all my thoughts to go to to go to sleep at night because i like my biggest problem was all the chatter in my head and I was not able to fall asleep. Sometimes I do like, I've learned, um, there's also different um, mudras you can look up. Mudras are just the way you hold your hands and Mm -hmm. some of them are meant for different things. Like I think the ring finger is meant for, in Kundalini it's meant for intuition. The middle finger is patience, the ring, the, this finger is wisdom or something. And so mm-hmm. you can kind of go online even and just look at the different ways and just kind of explore. But the, the key is to feel comfortable and cozy and like feel good because you don't want to be sitting for 10 minutes in an uncomfortable position because then you won't, then you'll want to get out of it. And that's the point is to just feel good um, wherever you're, whatever pose you're in. What are some of the tips that you could give people who... Um, have maybe started meditation, but it's just not working for them or they're trying to overcome something? Sure. So I think for me in the beginning, it's always going to be staying in that space and staying in the meditation because you will get antsy. You'll be thinking about what you have to do next. Uh, You know, Mm -hmm. someone makes a noise in the kitchen. What was that? Or, you know, something's going on around you. So that was always a challenge for me. I started meditating while I had roommates. So I remember meditating and, you know, my, my roommate below me making noises, getting ready for work, just kind of, uh, clinging around the house. And I had, that was, that was quite challenging. Um, I would also say that even just staying in the meditation itself, even for two minutes in the beginning was challenging. Um, one other thing that I know that has helped me is mantra, like using yeah. a mantra to help me get into a meditative space because it mm-hmm. can be difficult when you first start out. So each year I kind of have a, a set mantra. Personally, for me, guided meditation is kind of what helped me get started. Someone telling me, kind of walking me through the step of relaxation and getting into a meditative space. Um, so they always mention, okay, if you have a mantra, think of it now. And that's actually something that you can hold on to. You can repeat that continuously in your mind. Um, if silence is too much for you starting out, you can continue to, to repeat that. And that really gets you into that meditative space. Um, and then the other thing that my yoga instructor 
you know, his advice for everyone is, you know, all you have to do is kind of listen to the noises around you, but don't necessarily give them a name. So repeat the noises um, and the sounds around you and just listen, listen for a moment. And once you start listening, you, you'll find yourself in that peaceful state because you're not yeah. focused on what's going on in your mind. Actually, I wanted to add to that a little bit yeah. because, um, so one thing a, a yoga teacher here in Seattle has mentioned to me as well that has helped me is uh, the, and what and I think what your teacher is talking about as well, mm-hmm. is the senses. So mm-hmm. being very in tune with your senses. So I'll actually, to help me get in that space in the morning, sometimes I will do that as well, where I'm noticing the sounds, mm-hmm. but then I'm also noticing the air, the temperature of the air on my skin mm-hmm. and feeling of the rug underneath my feet. Right, the grounding and- of your body. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like the feeling of the texture of my clothes on my arm, things that you don't normally think about. That's that's mindfulness essentially, mm-hmm. uh, being very mindful of what you're feeling. Mm-hmm. But it does you get in the meditative state. So start small, and I would say like I tried two minutes in the morning for three days just to see if I could do it, and I did. Mm-hmm. So um, start small. The other thing with starting small is to sometimes it, it's helpful for a habit to latch it onto another habit. Mm-hmm. So if you um, something that they say in the meditation world, I heard is um, I think it's called RPM, Rise P Meditate. So you rise, you go to the bathroom, and you meditate. Now I know that's probably that's easy for me because I don't have a family, I don't have sure. you know a lot of people in my house. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that's challenging for different people that maybe just had a baby, this or that. Yeah. But just make it kind of add it to when you get your coffee, and then bring that to your meditation space, yeah. or maybe brush your teeth first, or you see your child, and then you go meditate. Yeah. So come up with something where you can kind of latch it on to a habit mm-hmm. that will help. Yeah. And to start small and also just be kind to yourself. Just, yeah, start small and it's okay if you miss a day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the other thing they said, there's another thing where it's the two day rule where you just don't miss two days in a row. Yeah. So if you go for five days and then you miss the sixth day, mm-hmm. just make sure you meditate the next day and that's okay. So just don't miss two days in a row. Yeah. And if I could give a, just to piggyback off of that, if I could give advice, especially for my moms out there who it may be hard in their morning routine to get meditation in, what works for me is um, I do attach it to something that I'm doing, but for me, I do it during my commute. So I'll put headphones on and I'll go to a guided meditation app. And for five minutes while I'm on my commute to work, that's my meditative space for the day. And then also throughout the week, if I'm not able to do that, if I'm at yoga, that's a good time for me to meditate during practice. So it's, I'm kind of getting a double whammy. I'm getting my workout in and then at the end, I'm checking off the meditation box for sure. Thanks guys. So that concludes part one of this series. all all about meditation. Part two is going to go into a little bit more about the setups, how you can set up the right environment around you, what resources and tools that you can use to start your meditation practice, and then we'll summarize for you just some overall tips on how to get started. Thanks for joining me. If you have your own meditation practice, I'd love to hear about what your experiences are, what have been the benefits for you, what are some struggles that you overcome, please comment below. And if you like this content and you wanna know more about self-care and positivity and how to boost morale in your everyday life, check out all my videos, make sure that you subscribe and click the little bell when you wanna get notified for new content when it uploads. Thanks again and have a good rest of your day. Bye.